Welcome back to Ways to Love Your Money. I'm Elizabeth Dawson, and we have a great show for you. I think we have a great show every week, but this week I think will be very special because it's just the real world and the real people that we want to talk to, and that the relationship with money doesn't have to be scary. It can just be something that we can casually talk about and get better financial advice. So before we get started on that, I just wanted to bring it up that... Uh, you know, we, if you have a family member or someone that you care about that's kind of troubling with their finances or having a not so good of a relationship with money, now's the time to possibly give us a phone call. We'll have a, we'll have a complimentary consultation just to see if there's anything we could do to help them out. But again, before we get into the show, I want to introduce to you Miss Christine Dwyer, and she is a wonderful guest. She is a, um, a registered nurse, and she's working in the children's hospital world in pediatrics. And uh, she's got a wonderful story to tell, so I hope you'll stay tuned. Um, just pause, we'll be right back. Well, welcome back. It's Elizabeth Dawson here, and our guest on the show today is Miss Christine Dwyer. We are very fortunate to have her here. She has a background in nursing, which I can't wait for her to tell you a little bit about her story and in addition about her relationship with money and then some things that are on her wish list and bucket list that she'd like to accomplish be you know within a certain amount of time so uh, without further ado thank you so much for being on the show with us Christine it's a pleasure to have you and it's an honor to have you thank you for the work that you do yeah thanks for having me I'm really excited to be here oh good good so since this is a money show and we're talking to basically the masses about money and their relationship with money. How would you say your relationship started with money as a child or a young adult? And uh, what were you trying to accomplish and what kind of influence or direction were you receiving? Uh, so I learned about money at a young age. Um, I actually started working when I was 14 years old, uh, doing a lot of babysitting jobs in the neighborhood. And then um, after that, I continued to work in the retail industry and the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, you know, my parents always taught me if I wanted to have anything extra yeah. to um, work for it and really appreciate, um, you know, the magic of making your own money and being able to afford things that you really want to buy. Sure. Well, you have to work hard if you want something. Yep. So, so exactly. you started in retail and then in the restaurant world, which I share the same thing with you because, you know, part of my youth was part of that too. And then growing, um, and then you came into the nursing industry. So you had some goals and dreams. I know we talked off camera here a few moments ago about it, but um, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Pennsylvania, so outside of Philadelphia. It's called Bucks County. Uh, I grew up there. I actually went to college in Pennsylvania, to York College of Pennsylvania, and then after I graduated, I've always wanted to live in Manhattan. So uh, I got my nursing degree in New York and I moved there right out of college. So how did that work? How did it feel? I mean, it's definitely a different environment than Pennsylvania. And, yes. and, and now you're here in San Diego, but how was it? How was the experience about being in New York and, and uh, the profession that you did and maybe the stress level a little bit different than normal? Yeah, definitely high stress level. Um, I think New York is known for its kind of tough attitude mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's a lot of go-getters there. Mm -hmm. So it's a fast-paced environment and, you know, you have to keep up with it. And when I first started working there, it was a huge adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, very fast-paced, um, a lot of work, but I learned a lot from it yeah. and I'll never forget the experience that I had there. That's great. How many years were you in New York in the city? Seven years. Seven years. So, so what type of nursing, what's your specialty, what were you doing in New York, and, and then I want to find out what brought you to San Diego. So I did start out in adults in New York, and then I always had this desire to do uh, pediatrics. Mm -hmm. So a pediatric intensive care unit position opened up, mm -hmm. and I worked there for five years, and I absolutely loved it. Um, it's dealing with pediatric population, so it's kids anywhere from maybe one day old to up to a maximum of like 25 years old, but mm -hmm. usually the threshold is about 18. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all kids in need of um, intensive medical care. So a lot of uh, life altering or life threatening diseases or injuries, um, that's basically the population that we would take care of. Mm. And so now you're in San Diego, you've been here since January. How has that transition been? 
Um, it's been great. Uh, definitely a slower pace of life. I think a little bit more uh, work-life balance here than in New York, as much as I love the hustle over there. Um, but it's definitely been a nice breather out here, better weather, more laid back environments. Um, so I'm, I've been thoroughly enjoying it out here. Well, that's good. Do you have a timeline or something else that you want to accomplish, a, a wish list item for your career? Um, you know, I've, I came out to San Diego because I wanted to see what nursing was like over on the West Coast as opposed to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've tried that and I've accomplished that. And now I do want to switch gears a little bit and maybe try to do um, some e-commerce because that's booming right now, mm -hmm. especially with COVID. So I'm really looking into that and doing some research on it. Okay, so, so you've got some entrepreneurial spirit and, yeah. and you're thinking about e-commerce. What are you thinking about selling on e-commerce? So I either want to go into the beauty industry or I want to go into um, retail and clothing. Okay. Any particular style? Is it your own design, your own fashions, or shopping as a buyer and then, and then selling what you buy? So I think it would be um, selling what I buy. I like both the West Coast style and the East Coast style, so mm -hmm. I think it would be kind of cool to do something in the middle of that and mm -hmm. something that would reach... A, a bi-coastal kind of view. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I have my life experience on the on the East Coast, and I lived in New Jersey and New York for a few years, and family's back there too. So I understand the total difference of personality, people. You know, a little, maybe a little bit more hard or harsher, um, and you're dealing with a different kind of climate. But they're all wonderful people on both sides, just a little different. Definitely, definitely. So you were telling me a little bit about something about your sister. She's just started or launched a new business. Do you want to talk about that? Correct, yeah. So she mm -hmm. is actually back in New York, back in Manhattan. Okay. Um, I do have a sample of her product with me. Okay. So basically she created this product. Um, it started when she was over in Turkey. Her husband is actually part Turkish. And um, they had these mud baths. Mm -hmm. And after the mud baths, like, her skin felt amazing. So it kind of sparked this idea to do a hot clay mask at home. Okay. So it's kind of like a hot clay mask with a twist. Um, it actually comes with a Keurig cup. So uh, the kit comes with a Keurig cup that either has tea or coffee in it. And you actually brew the tea or coffee and then mix it with uh, the clay mixture also provided in the kit. Wow. And you put it right on your face as it's hot. So it feels amazing. And wow. She has all different kinds and they're awesome so how long ago did she start th doing this she started this uh i want to say about two two and a half years okay. ago and she's just actually launching it now with the product and okay. you know getting on social media so that's great that's great so so was there a family member or or someone that influenced you that kind of gave you the entrepreneurial bug or is it just something that's happened because of you know, COVID and we have all these other, you know, creative things that we're thinking of because the world of online is even expanding even more. Yeah, I would say my sister definitely had a part in that. Um, I do like the idea of kind of being your own boss and just creating something that's wholly and authentically yours. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do think she had a big um, influence on that. Mm -hmm. And I also always have loved beauty and fashion. So mm -hmm. It was kind of the combination of those two that really sparked this. So are you starting? Are you starting to kind of develop what you want to create and what you want to do at this time? Or I, Yeah, um, I'm listening to a lot of podcasts on entrepreneurship. Um, there's a few of them that I really like in particular, and I think it's easy to listen to them, but hard to like actually initiate it and start it on your own. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of looking at all the how-tos right now and then, working my way to that step to actually, you know, launching it and narrowing down what I really, really want to do with it. Sure, sure. No, but I mean, it's great. You have, you have your whole future. You know, there's so many wonderful ideas that you can come up with. You know, I, I know that Definitely. I'm going to kind of rewind a little bit because I wanted to ask you about what you felt when it, one of your greatest achievements, like when you were, um, you know, growing as an individual, because I think you've had a lot of growing that you've done. So, mm -hmm. so what was one of your greatest achievements that you'd like to share with us? So for me personally, it was actually uh, my first job in Manhattan when I worked on an adult floor. Mm -hmm. Basically at that time, um, it was really stressful and overwhelming and I almost reached a breaking point where I felt like I, I wasn't capable of doing the job because mm -hmm. 
it was so hard and challenging. Mm-hmm. And every day I had to get up and I had to tell myself just one more day, just one more day. And finally, two years passed at that job and I realized how much I had accomplished after I had so much self-doubt. Mm-hmm. So really anytime I have any self-doubt with myself, I think back to that job and how you know hard on myself I was and how I really, I, I didn't believe in myself at the time and I was able to pull through and actually, you know, achieve a lot in that job and learn a lot from that job and get through it. That's great because even taking from that point in your time, I love the fact that you're like, whenever I have any self-doubt, I think about that time and then I get through it because even when you're going into business for yourself, there's going to be some of those days too, which is going to be, Absolutely. which is going to be, where, where do you get your self-encouragement for, from? You know, um, we talk a lot about how do you run your personal finances like a business does for profit. And so many of us, we're looking at a business and we're running that business or whatever the career is, running that for profit or productivity or efficiency. But then when we look at our own personal finances, it's a little different. We don't necessarily grade ourselves with the same um, eye, if you will. So, so have you had any business planning or anything like this um, to kind of go into your dream about wanting to go into e-commerce? Um, so that is another thing I'm working on and, and really looking into, um, even personal finance, I'm still, I'm still learning a lot about, um, it's been helpful coming out to the West coast because living in Manhattan, you spend all of your money on going out for dinner and drinks or going to a show. And in San Diego, it's a little bit more of a laid back lifestyle. And instead of going out for a long brunch, we would go to the Bay and, you know, bring food and drinks there. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's definitely a different way of saving money. Um, but that's in, in a personal aspect, as far as a business aspect, it's, there's a lot of quirks I'm still learning through Mm -hmm. and, um, wanting to plan out. So, um, yeah, I'm still doing a lot of research on those. Good. So what would be one of the things that you would say to your younger self or to the younger generation? Um, definitely as far as money goes, um, I would definitely say start retirement, saving for retirement early. Um, and I would say that you don't need everything that you see on Instagram. (laughs) I would say you should save your money, um, more than you think you should. Um, and yeah, really be mindful of where you're spending and, and always think about the future. Are you investing right now in your, in your like financial education? Is that what, what, where you're at right now? You're. You're constantly trying to, to grow that knowledge right now, would you say? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah, especially with COVID and, you know, life is a little bit slower right now, so you have a lot more time mm-hmm. to think about things. So mm-hmm. I'm definitely getting more into that. That's good. That's good. Well, let's talk about the fun stuff. What's one of, the, what's one of your items that's on your bucket list that you'd like to do besides the uh, e-commerce business? Besides the e-commerce, yes. Um, well, after COVID dies down a little bit and things get back to normal, I would love to travel more. Mm -hmm. Um, Italy has always been on the top of my list Mm -hmm. um, for Europe, so that's definitely on my bucket list and spend, I would love to spend two weeks there and just explore the whole area Mm -hmm. and eat the food and just get engrossed in the culture over there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's big. It's big like California, so you need at least two weeks. So, you know, plan for that one the right way. Uh, it's it's a wonderful country, and there's so much to see and so different in so many different places, kind of like the difference between California and New York. So many vast differences. So I encourage you to con- continue to build that dream and, and go after it. That's great. Anything like with family? I know that you are one of three sisters, and... Uh, you know, your parents and everything like that. Is there anything that's going on with you and family during COVID right now that, that's making you struggle? I know that you recently just visited with them, so that's kind of nice because being mm-hmm. on the other side of the world here, it seems like it's a little bit more difficult to, to get to spend time with our family. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I mean, like I said before, I, I thought, I'm very close with my family, so I thought that I'd be able to visit them a lot more often, um, you know, just to fly away, but now it's really limited. So mm-hmm. it's been really hard um, missing out on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I also have two nephews and a niece. Oh, wow. So I want them to remember me and know uh-huh. who I am. So I have to do a lot of FaceTiming with them. Good. Um, Good. But there's nothing like being there in person and watching sure. all the milestones happen. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's been a bit of a struggle. But, yeah. um, you know, you get through it and you, you make the best you can of it, out of it. So. Yeah. 
Well, fi- we'll leave it on this. What's your What's your final fun fact about you? My final fun fact. Um... There's a lot of interesting ones. I guess um, one would be that I, when I moved to San Diego, I didn't know a single soul out here. So um, I moved here not knowing anybody, not really knowing what the town was like. Mm -hmm. Um, I had only been to San Francisco before, and that was the only part of California I had been to. So um, it was really a leap of faith coming out here, and I'm really happy that I did it. Good, good. I mean, it's an incredible story because not many people would just pick up and go. You know, they wouldn't just pick up and reroute and things like that. So, so I give you a lot of credit for it. Well, yeah. I hope that uh, you'll continue to watch our show, be a part of the Copia family, and continue to be a fan of Ways to Live Your Money. We're, we're grateful to have you here, and thank you for sharing your story with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, the grassroots of everything in life are basically built on ambition, and I think Miss Christine has that ambition. So if this speaks to you, please let us know. You know, put something in the comments. Tell us what you want to hear about, what you want to talk about. But a relationship with money gets you to where you want to go, gets you to where you want to accomplish things. You've got goals, dreams, and desires, and you need to have that wish list now put, to, put together and design it because you get to design your life any way you want to. That's what Wealth by Design is all about, our book, which you can kind of see a copy of it right here. And we encourage you to get more financial education, to be more financially literate, so you can feel confident about the decisions that you want to do or make in your life. And obviously, if you want to create your own entrepreneurial business spirit, now is the time to do it more than ever. Thanks to COVID, but boy, it sure created a lot of creativity out there. So again, thank you so much for being on the show with us, Christine, and it's been a pleasure to have you. Hold on, stay tuned. We'll come back with one more question from the audience that we received this last week. Stay tuned. Wow, what a wonderful conversation that I just had with Miss Christine Dwyer. She is, uh, you know, she's got the bug. She's got the entrepreneurial bug. She wants to go into e-commerce and do other things, and she's getting educated right now. And there's other podcasts just like ours that are educating her on, on how to base, build a business online. And that's amazing right now because we are kind of stuck in our four walls for the most, you know, for however long that that's going to take. But getting creative, we we still like to shop. We still like to wear makeup, especially us women. And uh, even some men out there, I can't discriminate, right? (laughs) Uh, But for that said, how can you create something that's unique? How can you have a better relationship with it financially? And how can you grow that small idea into something real? It's about manifesting. Can you manifest that opportunity for your future? Uh, But I am very thankful for her service and what she does at Children's Hospital and what she's done in her world of, uh, of medicine because if we didn't have wonderful people like her, how could we actually accomplish what we want? with our children, with our family members, and uh, get the care that we need. Uh, in addition, if you have questions like this, please reach out to us. I know we have a question from the audience right now, and I'm going to do my best to answer it. Go ahead, Rachel. Should I make a larger down payment on a car to lower monthly payments or put down the minimum amount? I think that answer is different for each person. Now, whenever you finance something, a car is a perfect example, You can either save up enough money in your bank account to just write one check. You're financing it based on cash of what you couldn't receive on that cash again. Um, If I put a bigger down payment, make sure you do the math. And if you haven't had great education about how to buy a car, you might want to talk to a financial professional because uh, really good financial professionals are going to know what to look for when it comes to, should I put a big down payment on? Should I look at no down payment? Really where I'm going to go with this is what does your cash flow look like and what can you afford? Because unfortunately, so many times I see, uh, especially even maybe younger people or it doesn't matter what their age is, they might take off a, you know, bite off a bigger piece of a payment than they really can afford. And they're not necessarily looking at the whole big picture. So you don't want a thousand dollar car payment. You don't even want a $500 car payment. You want something that's going to actually be more modifiable in your cash flow. So do you have money in savings? What does that look like? I can tell you from my personal experience, I don't put a penny down on any car that I buy because the depreciation of that vehicle is happening so fast. But it's something where I look at my finances and make sure my cash flow can afford that. And if it can't, then it's not time to buy it. So that's a conversation you want to have with yourself. If you need a specific payment, make sure before you go in and talk to the person that's trying to sell you the car that they're not trying to fit the payment into your budget because it might be a seven or eight year loan where what happened to the five year loan and how long do you want this car? 
because uh, so many times we see people basically trading their cars every two to three years. That's not where you want to have a very long you know, payment on your plan for that vehicle. So you want to look at everything now and down the road. Now and what does it look like from five years ago? Or what does it look like from six years ago? Um, I have a car that is paid off, um, one of my cars, and it, uh, I purchased that in 2014 and it's paid off, but it still needs maintenance. It still needs tires. It just needed new rotors. It was a pretty big bill I had to pay this morning. So make sure when you're looking at what that cost of that payment's going to be for that car, not only do you look at the cost of what the insurance is gonna be, and also the monthly or annual maintenance on that vehicle. Is the service going to be as, you know, as expensive or less expensive as your previous car? You've gotta build in all these pieces. Most of the time we see this and we go, Oh gosh, you know, my car insurance was X, now it's double. Well, that has to be part of the cash flow budget. So remember, it's just a car. And that car needs to get you to point A from point to point B. And you want to make sure that you're safe and that your vehicle is safe. But you also want to make sure your cash flow isn't suffering or you're sacrificing it for other, you know, lost opportunity costs or more cash savings for your future. I hope this is helpful. Everyone's individual situation is very different, um, but uh, we'd love to talk to you about when you're ready to go buy that car because maybe we can help you negotiate a better price. And maybe we can negotiate even a better payment without you know, the people in the finance department trying to make it fit in in a very long period of time. So hope this was helpful. Again, thanks so much for watching the show or listening to the show, and we'd love your comments and we would love your feedback. Uh, please use this as a resource if you ever have any financial questions. You're welcome to give us a call at 619-640-2622. We'll answer any of your questions that you have or set up a complimentary consultation. We'd love to talk with you. All right, take care. We'll talk soon. The information provided in this show is for informational and educational purposes only. This show is not investment advice, nor is it intended to address the financial needs of any particular viewer. The opinions expressed on this show are not intended to be an endorsement of any particular investment strategy or service of any other kind. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned throughout the show. Before acting on information in this show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular situation and strongly consider seeking advice from a financial advisor.